Hello, hello, Mordimers here, and welcome to the T6 Season 20 Super Final, where Lila has zero place against Stockfish. So 100 games, we have a lot of beautiful games, uh, and I'm gonna show you a couple of them. The first one is the game number four, where Lila has zero place with the white pieces, and Stockfish is with the black pieces, and it's a very, very interesting opening, and it was based on the real game. So without further ado, let's see what just happened. Of course, as always, we we have a pre-arranged move, so we have knight f6, we have c4, g6, knight c3, bishop g7, we have e4, we have d6, so king's Indian defense. We have h3, the line which is the sideline, uh, but it's not that rare, even in the public uh, database we have, you know, a couple of thousand games. Uh, we have the castle, we have bishop e3, we have c5, of course e5 also is possible here, but we have the variations with the c5, we have knight f3, and now queen a5, uh, pinning the knight. And here the variation which was chosen for this game between the engines came from the game of Alireza Firuzia, who played with the white pieces against Grandmaster Kartikeyan. So... This is very famous game. It was played in 2019. Alireza went for a knight d2. So this is the continuation in this game. Um, we have c takes on d4 and now knight b3. So very nice plan by Alireza. Attacking the queen, centralizing the knight because definitely the queen has to go somewhere. But where would you go with the queen? This is the very important question. You can actually try to think for a while uh, and find the square for the queen. Uh, so the queen in this case moved on c3. So this is the queen sacrifice in just move nine. Okay, move number nine and the queen already was sacrificed. Uh, B takes on c3, D takes on e3 and this is the starting position end of the book so the engines are on the own and I would like to just tell you that Alireza told okay I need to be solid here I, I have the queen for two pieces so if I play f3 everything should be fine however of course at the same time uh, his dark squares are really really weak so Kartikeyan play knight h5 and then after uh, queen c1 we had bishop h6 a lot of pressure here quite a dangerous position and Alireza Firuzia lost that game he was in the situation where he was uh, the one who had to defend and as you already see black didn't develop the pieces yet so that was very very brave I'm not sure it was the, the home preparation as this knight d2 knight uh, b3 maneuver uh, is not in the database so it's quite rare so I'm not sure if uh, Grandmaster Kartikeyan uh, knew that the Dalireza gonna play that uh, or not maybe it was uh, you know played in the other games uh, but I didn't find anything in the at least in the public game so uh, that's what happened however here Lila Chesiro didn't care about the pawn on f2 and played Bishop d3 so this is kind of novelty uh, and now we have e takes on f2, king takes on f2, knight b to d7. And now a very interesting uh, move by Lila chess 0, c5, sacrificing the pawn. The idea is to also exchange the pieces. So of course, if the knight takes on the, on the c5, we're gonna exchange more pieces, more exchange pieces. Uh, that means it's gonna be easier to get to the end game. And in the end game, queen will win against uh, the two minor pieces. So that's the, the roughly the idea. So this is why Stockfish played D takes on C5. And now queen to e2, connecting the rooks. Now the rooks can come, for example, to the open d file. And this is the only open file. Uh, we have b6. So, of course, Stockfish want to develop also the bishop. As you, if you are, you know, down the queen for two pieces, of course, you want to bring your minor pieces to the center and try to attack. We have rook h to d1, preparing to, to castle artificially. So a very simple plan. And it seems like white already get most of the pieces out while black it's still underdeveloped so uh, maybe this sacrifice was just too early of course the engines were forced to do that uh, but as you already see this is very interesting game uh, now we have knight h5 getting to under control this dark square so that's the first idea but maybe something more important is that opening the diagonal for the bishop so first we have bishop b5 of course uh, exchanging it would be 
uh, not that great in favor of white because now simply bishop d7 and of course uh, here in this case white is completely winning having the queen for the for the rook so definitely this is enough to win so this is why the exchange has to be um, avoided we have knight e5 and now queen e3 it's a very important move now queen e3 why because if white tries to hide the king which is very natural move the problem is a6 and now where to move the bishop if the bishops go here then of course it's gonna be uh, trapped there if going to the c4 it's gonna be trapped together with the with the knight here we would have very nice fork here and finally if bishop d3 we would have knight f4 attacking the queen attacking the bishop uh, attacking the bishop one more time so for example queen e3 and then after knight f take on d3 rook d3 we don't take this with the knight but rather play c4 so the rook is under attack, rook would have to retreat uh, and only then exchange on the b3. So this position would be uh, very comfortable to play by black. Of course, uh, black has one extra pawn and three minor pieces for the queen. So that should be enough to win the game by black. Uh, so this is why we have queen e3 making a space for the for the bishop opening this diagonal uh, and now we have c4 so the bishop is still locked over there and probably it can be trapped over there as well uh, for now the knight is under attack so knight have to move to d4 and also opening this diagonal so the bishop always can can escape so black doesn't harass now uh, first development first of course we have bishop b7 uh, we have knight f3 trying to exchange the, the knights and now knight d3 with the check and finally the king goes uh, to the safe square on g1 and now again can black actually pick up the pawn on c3 not really because yes uh, black would win the exchange however would also lose this pawn on c4 and this pawn is very important defender of this outpost on d3 so uh, for example bishop c3 bishop c4 winning the exchange but then this knight is gone and white have very comfortable position with the queen for the rook and the minor piece and yes uh, black also has to extra pawns so the game would not be so comfortable maybe uh, and it's still a lot to play but definitely white would get some edge here so this is why stockfish went for rook a to c8 uh, and now supporting the pawn on c4 uh, so the outpost on d3 is very very strong so lila chess zero want to liquidate this we have knight e1 uh, and of course uh, stockfish want to avoid so we have knight d to f4 we have also rook d7 now attacking the bishop on b7 attacking the pawn on e7 and now maybe now take this pawn uh, actually it would not be so bad uh, the point is now this rook is under attack probably in this case should be actually moved but where to move the rook because if you move to c1 black gonna have very nice uh, couple of tempi here because the bishop can come to the b5 uh, and then make this pin which would be very very unpleasant so probably king h2 first and after bishop c5 uh, the queen would have to move and of course the game could continue and uh, the position is extremely complicated probably would be very very fun to see uh, and if you think uh, hey queen c3 this you miss that, 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 that this bishop can be taken for free actually that would be very nice trap okay so black would win without any problems so um, yeah I didn't forget about that just just you know I, I told everybody can see that uh, a6 was played by the by the stockfish so now attacking the the bishop so of course bishop a4 and only now bishop c3 of course the bishop still cannot be taken because of this fork so we have rook a to d1 rook c1 of course uh, black would have very nice tempi here so not an option uh, and now this bishop is under attack so also have to be moved so bishop a8 
we have rook e7 now uh, and bishop f6 attacking the rook rook e to d7 uh, and now b5 so as you already see these three pawns very very slowly uh, are pushing so stockfish is doing really great here even sacrifice the queen and now this pawn uh, can be in some uh, variations very very uh, dangerous especially the rook stays just behind we have bishop c2 as the bishop was under attack and now knight g3 saying hey do you want to take um, one of my knights of course uh, none of them can be taken uh, because if it's taken we would exchange the queen for two knights for example this way and yeah that would be completely losing because two extra pawns for black would be enough to win so this is why uh lila chess zero went for knight f3 and now we have rook c to e8 focusing on this central pawn and trying to win the pawn in the center which is isolated and impossible to actually uh, to defend uh lila chess zero tries to defend at least one move we have now knight f to h5 so remaneuvering the knights and here lila chess zero decided okay i don't care about that pawn and i want to have more active queen so queen a7 attacking undefended the pawn on a6 and also uh possible that uh lila chess zero would win all three pawns all the chain is in the danger now so what stockfish did in this position stockfish just didn't care why because after bishop e4 which was played by stockfish bishop e4 uh, knight e4 we had now rook c7 so why not to take this pawn it's free pawn and maybe possible free three pawns not really because first uh, after queen a6 we would have knight c5 which is not the worst because okay exchanging and uh, the exchange and for three pawns would be pretty okay so after queen b5 the problem is that black has one extra move here which is rook e1 with check so knight e1 have to be taken and only then we take the rook and after queen d7 there is rook d8 which is extremely dangerous why because the queen has to be moved and now the problem is that the bishop can come to d4 with check and where you're gonna move the king if the king goes to f1 we're gonna have the checkmate this is the checkmate in one move so it's not possible if king h1 we're gonna have very uncomfortable bishop f2 attacking the knight and the rook is coming to to d1 in the next move so you cannot defend the knight at the same time and defend the uh, the square d1 so that means it's uh, if you play something like new, uh, knight f3 then you're gonna get rook d1 king h2 and you're gonna get checkmated again so it's also not possible uh, and finally if king h2 then we would have first bishop e5 with the check king g1 and now bishop g3 threatening uh, to win the knight again the problem is okay king f1 can be played uh, here uh, and okay knight cannot deliver the checkmate but the rook d1 is still on the board and now this knight is just lost for free you can exchange of course the the rook and the bishop for the knight and the, and the queen but then black gonna win with the extra knight so that doesn't make any sense for example queen e8 and after king g7 uh, just exchange it this way but but it doesn't make any sense of course black is completely winning here uh but if king e2 then of course we're gonna have this position which is also winning uh, by black just need to coordinate the pieces uh, and potentially this pawn can be very dangerous uh, but the engines shouldn't have the problems to to win that game so queen a6 was completely not possible in this position so this is why we have rook c7 now taking under control this c5 so now the pawns uh, of course can be taken easily uh, but stockfish has a different opinion bishop c3 attacking the rook so rook has to be moved the rook d1 and now knight h to g3 so it looks like uh, pretty dangerous this bishop for example if this pawn is taken uh, can come to this way uh which can be pretty dangerous here uh white really have to be careful of some checkmate uh, checkmates ideas so that's why we have king h2 just to not lose the tempo 
but now we have bishop a5 attacking the rook so rook c6 saying okay now i'm gonna win the pawn uh, but here we have knight c3 again attacking the rook so rook d7 seems like with the tempo but after knight f1 Believe me or not, but the game ended with a draw. So a little bit disappointing, uh, but black actually has the way to force a draw in this position, which started to be really, really interesting. Now, why it's a draw? Because if the king starts to go, for example, king g1, we're gonna have knight g3, and even if white starts to take the pawns, uh, then the problem is knight c2 e2 with the check, uh, king h2 and we're gonna have knight f1 and as you already see both of the squares are controlled by the knight uh, so we would have the threefold repetition so that's the first thing and if you think hey hey the king can escape this way uh, yes can escape but only to f2 and here after knight e4 it has to go back to uh, sorry to f1 first uh, and then and that gonna be a threefold repetition as well because king e2 would not work because we would have the attack on the on the queen uh, together with the check and that would be completely uh, lost for white so this is why we cannot move king f2 knight a6 rook a6 and of course black is winning here with the extra two pawns that should be enough to win the game uh, and also last thing what if in this position we would have for example okay maybe move the rook to f6 and then push on the on the f7 and then we're gonna have the checkmate here on g7 uh h7 uh, why not to do that uh, for the same reason knight c2 e2 and we're gonna have threefold repetition and now king f2 would be even worse because now with the check we would have the attack on the rook and the problem is that now uh, even this rook would be lost okay and the king cannot escape to d1 because at the end if the queen takes the, the knight here we would have a beautiful uh, beautiful pin and winning the queen so king f1 but then knight d7 and again black has completely winning position here so this is why after knight f1 uh, we saw the draw so the result of this game is a draw but it's just proof that some positions even you sacrifice the queen okay that was for two um, uh, two pieces uh, it was not so much activity at the beginning for black but the position was uh, still very very interesting and I think uh, it has quite a lot of potential uh, to maybe explore. So, uh, so yeah, that was the first game of the Super Final. I will, I think I will show you maybe two or three more games. And if you like this video, press like if for some reason you don't like it, press that like. And if you don't want to miss other games from t uh, Super Final Season 20, press subscribe, smash the bell button. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.